Today, we are talking about Reframe, a powerful brand and approach to optimizing your health, business, and life. Founded by fitness pro Jill Bunny and TV media pro Kristen Crowley. If you have tuned in the last couple of weeks on our episodes with CBT Meets Fitness, you'll be familiar with Jill Bunny. Jill is the CEO of CBT Meets Fitness, a global movement to improve mental health and fitness through cognitive behavioral therapy. Kristen Crowley is a visionary in her own regards. She has a deep passion to bring people together, create networks, and reignite the human condition and connection in a world of wellness. These two powerhouses have created Reframe Method, where they curate events and retreats to help their clients create an action plan that will level up their lives, their fitness, and even their fitness brands. Thank you, ladies, for joining me today. Thank you for having us. I am so excited that you're joining me because... I think, you know, I guess let's go back one second. You know, everybody has learned about you, Jill. So Kristen, I would love for our listeners to get a little bit of you. I'd love for you to share a bit around your story about your media life and also a little bit about fitness. All right. So yeah, everybody's got to hear all of Jill's backstory in the past few episodes. So I was listening to it with my kids the other day too. So they were actually listening to it, which was great. Um, My story is um, a very strange one (laughs) in the sense of unpredictability um, because I kind of went on a, a weird journey in my life through all of my careers, which were in merchandising and store design. And then I went into the restaurant business for many, many years. And it was actually one of my bar customers who drug me into television, kicking and screaming, did not want to do it, petrified of public speaking, Um, finally bit the bullet at the ripe old age of 28 (laughs) and decided I was going to start my career in TV news. Um, Did not know, you know, really what to expect. I just jumped in with both feet and it was sink or swim. I had very little training, Uh, did not go to school for that. Um, So I really had a very short amount of time to prove myself in the live TV world, and it is petrifying. Um, I understand what everybody feels when they go on camera for the first time, because I felt it for about six months (laughs) until I was comfortable. Uh, And after that, I spent 12 years live on air every single morning in uh, the Hampton Roads area, which is coastal Virginia, uh, in Norfolk, Virginia. And I have worked with amazing people and amazing opportunities. But I really just wanted to get back to fitness and wellness because it's always been a part of my life. So I decided for my health to leave my job uh, in August of last year, which is 2019, and embark on an adventure that I had no idea where it would take me and ended up doing events because that's what I love to do. But then the universe brought Jill and I together um, through the power of Strong Fitness Magazine, and we formed our business venture together. And again, I left everything open. I was, I really had no preconceived notion of where my, what I would do in wellness and fitness because I'm not a typical trainer. Um, Mm. And I focus on media and PR. So um, that's what, yeah, it just brought me to that point. So now we get to help everybody with all the things and it's pretty freaking incredible. I love that. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, it's it's great to hear that insight because it'll really give people context on what you guys are creating, right? The both sides mm-hmm. of the coin. And following up on last week's episode about CBT meets fitness, the conversation around reframe your mind and body is an important one. And that's mm-hmm. why I wanted to have the both of you on today um, because I feel like it's really bridging the gap between the principles of CBT and how you literally reframe the way you think about your body through your mind, right? Exactly. And if you, mm-hmm. you know, if you followed along with Reframe, watching Kristen and Jill, you'll see what a beautiful friendship you guys have and that they have a really special business bond. So I would love to hear the story about how the two of you met and then share with us what you've created with Reframe and the philosophy around it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll let Kristen talk about the philosophy because she's a whiz with words um (laughs) such a funny story actually how we met and it's like serendipity or i I say it's like tinder where you're just not expecting anything (laughs) and it just happens and it's like we're a success story (laughs) um so instagram happens you know that's how you connect and meet with people and obviously i got the cover with strong and my article came out about my thyroid cancer and Kristen kind of connected with that because she was going through some health issues as well. Mm. And we had a few conversations on Instagram and, you know, 
few, a few messages here or there. And then we kind of left it for a little while. And I ended up being back in Arizona. She was in Arizona at the same time. And I thought, hey, you know what? What are you doing? And she goes, well, not too much. I'm like, should we get a coffee? She goes, sure. So we met up, had a coffee, and literally within 10 minutes, it was like I knew her my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I got to hear about her incredible business, WellFit Social, where she makes a huge connection in the fitness industry and bringing people together. Mm -hmm. And I said, I I'm coming. I'm coming to, I'm coming to it yeah. in January and I'm going to speak. And yep. literally, <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> and lo and behold, three, four months later, we not only did the WellFit Social and got to speak there, but we've also created mm -hmm. a business and um, writing a book and, and doing these retreats. So it's pretty incredible. Oh my goodness. That gives me complete goosebumps, guys. Like you said, it's like serendipitous. It is. Right? That you became fast friends. Literally, I mean, guys, if, you, if you're not following Reframe yet, make sure you follow them on Instagram. But if you see the chemistry between the two of you, it's like you've been friends forever. <laughs> it's That's really like. beautiful. Yeah. No. And I think that is really powerful to speak about, you know, how you are meant to create this reframe together. You've reframed what friendships even are. So I love that, that's really exciting. So I would love to hear a little bit about the reframe philosophy and kind of what you guys are creating with these events that are different from what you guys have created individually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the reframe events themselves. So, and I, I think that what Jill said about how we met is an important um, lesson for everybody is don't be afraid to send the message because again, I was, you know, I mean, I've done TV my whole life. To me, it's very normal and it's not mm -hmm. that special to me. Like I think, yeah, I just do TV. It's a, it's a normal job in, in essence, it's not, but you know, it's normal pay. And I saw this cover model who I was like, oh, she's probably really, you know, stuck up and she's not going to talk to me. And, you know, I mean, you get all the, the preconceived notions about wh what a woman is before right. you even know them. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, you know what, screw it. And when I read, and it took me reading her story to know the human side. Mm. And so when I reached out, I was like, you know, screw it. I'm just going to send a message. And we just kind of connected that way. But I, that's why I always say, don't be afraid to like step out of the like comfort zone and to be the weirdo in the room and actually be different and say something, you know, to someone in a totally different realm or a business, because you never know the connection it'll make. Um, mm. So that's just my life lesson kids. So mm. I'm old. I say life lessons all the time. <laughs> um, but <laughs> The basis of uh, reframe in general, because I, again, wanted to help fitness and wellness professionals in the media and PR space, because there are very specific ways that you can market yourself. And there's very specific ways and timing to do it. And because I'm one of the few people who've actually worked in a newsroom, most PR people have not, I know the timing and what you should be doing. And mm. we we're talking about getting women together and creating this bond, which, you know, I was part of the business group last year in Arizona, which was 12 women. And I finally learned that I didn't need to do it alone. Um, and I, I realized how powerful it was when we all got together mm -hmm. um, and just how much more motivated everybody was. But after the conference and after, you know, things like Fitposium or these big fitness conferences, everybody's all jazzed up, but they take zero action on what they want to do. They don't get the photos done. They don't know where to go. They end up spending $10,000 with like three different photographers and trying to find branding. So we're like, you know what? Why don't we create not the kumbaya retreats that everybody goes to and sits around and talks the whole time. We want to actually take action. So we wanted to create a safe space for women in fitness and wellness to come and accelerate their brand to the next level. So that includes your photographer, your video, getting PR and media training, getting CBT to get your mindset and all of the, all the things. And, you know, I never do anything small. Jill knows this already. Whenever I do anything, <laughs> I go big all the time. And so it's like, if we're, you know, we decided we need to share everything we've learned. So other women don't make the same mistakes and don't waste their money. Mm. And that was the biggest thing. And we, you know, there are a lot of retreats. That's like the new trend. Everybody wants to do them and you do them for different reasons. We just wanted to do it for a reason that we felt passionate about was helping these women succeed and actually get everything they need to launch their brands or take it to the next level, whatever they're, or get published, whatever they want to do. So that's kind of where it all came together and reframe was really came out of, you know, words we wrote a ton of words on a page like the word vomit and just decided we were like oh my gosh 
you can reframe your whole life by changing your thoughts and behaviors and you can reframe your business. So it, that's literally, it came in, how long were we on the phone, Jill? Maybe three hours and that all came Maybe together? Maybe three hours, everything. Yeah. So it's amazing. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. I absolutely love it. And and I think everybody listening will get a new appreciation for what they can expect out of a retreat, mm -hmm. right? Because it's true. I know a lot of people, especially entrepreneurs that spend a lot of money on self-development retreats, trying to gain as much information. Of course, we want to grow with our mm -hmm. brains. Um, but oftentimes we are left not knowing how to implement. So I think that's a powerful place to be of like, you are going to get everything you need to know and we are going to show you exactly what to do so that you can leave here implementing, right? Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. I might have to come to every single one of your retreats now, right? <laughs> we hope so. We welcome we hope you. So. Okay. <laughs> so one of the principles that I know that you're both passionate about is collaboration. Collaboration within the fitness industry and I'm sure the media world is always an interesting conversation, right? As people think that mm -hmm. everything is a competition and that there's often, I guess, this fear around if I help other people, perhaps they're going to get ahead and I'll be left behind, right? So tell us about your collaboration, not competition philosophy. So for, for, for us, it's when you work as a team, you grow, you're able to do more things together. If you're all by yourself, building a business, building a brand, I've done two, you're kind of at a very low playing field and it'll take you a lot longer. But if you start to bring people in that have the same philosophy, that believe in you, and you're open and honest about mm -hmm. what you're trying to get from it as well, you're okay. But when you're not asking, what would you like? Then there's that, I'm going to jump on your toes and take what you have and go forward. And we both know that collaboration is key and we're in it for the right reasons. And, you know, our focus is on helping other people. And that's both of our number one priorities. It's not money, it's not this, because then obviously our values aren't connected. But right from the get-go, we yeah. knew that our mission is similar. And that's kind of what you need to do when you collaborate is, are we on the same page? Because if you're not, well, things probably aren't gonna go very well. But then again, you'll have great learning experiences. And I've had collaboration with a lot of different people and it hasn't always worked out, but mm. I've always learned something from it and how I'd move forward. Mm -hmm. And then when I met Chris and Carly, I knew there was no hesitation, <laughs> there was no weird feeling. It was like, this is right. And I'm just going to go with it. I love it. Yeah. I love the saying that a rising tide lifts all boats. Right. Mm -hmm. And this I really speaks that. to collaboration, right. About the ben what benefits one benefits all. And I love that you guys are doing this with women because oftentimes, you know, as women, we do, I mean, I know for me, I'm always a cheerleader for others, but sometimes there's this weird dynamic in women that it does become this fierce competition. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm looking forward for you guys to uncover the conversations around that, that really go deep into, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy, kind of those limiting beliefs, the psyche of what, why women get stuck here and really changing the conversation around this, right? Mm -hmm. So I would love actually your perspective, um, Jill, kind of from like a CBT perspective about why we kind of get, especially women into this kind of competition standpoint outside of getting on the stage and competing, right? <laughs> How their psyche around girls and women, we're always like almost butting heads until mm -hmm. we open up the conversation this way. A lot of the times it's, it stems back from fear. It stems mm -hmm. back from core beliefs of feeling that we're hopeless, we're worthless, we're unlovable. Mm -hmm. So we start to build these barriers. And when we have them, it's saying, well, if I let somebody in, they're going to hurt me or they're going to take from me. So I'm just going to keep closed off and I won't get hurt. But in the process, mm -hmm. you're actually not fully soaring to your full potential. So with CBT, what we try and do is look at the reality of it. So if someone says, if I have to collaborate, I'm going to lose all of this. Okay, well, let's actually look and see what is the truth behind that? What can you get from it? Right? And we start to write those things down. And if you do collaborate, what are the benefits? What, what things can you do that you've never been able to do before? And that starts to open up some doors, right. but it does take time, I, I will admit. <laughs> it does take time. It does take for time. Sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. As you know from last week's episode, Jill is infiltrating the fitness industry with a conversation 
around CBT meets fitness, where she is shifting the conversation, showing that diet and exercise isn't always enough, and that coaching through CBT and healthy thinking is the access to reaching your desired weight with ease, right? Mm -hmm. So Jill, tell us a little bit how you're incorporating your CBT meets fitness into Reframe. Mm -hmm. So when we do photo shoots, a lot of people might be listening. We get those limiting beliefs. We start sabotaging ourselves like, oh, I don't look good enough. You know, at that retreat, there's going to be 20 beautiful women. And what's going to happen? We're going to have glares saying, oh, she's thinner than me. She's leaner than me. She's going to get a cover. I'm not going to get a cover. I can't shoot this. It, it is endless. They'll also look at what other people are eating saying, oh, she's eating this. Maybe I'm eating too much. Like I could go on forever. Right. But what we want to do is say, okay, well, let's write those down. I will be there the whole time. I want to reframe their unhelpful thoughts when it comes mm. to shooting or when it comes to saying, I can't do this script for a video. Yes, you can, because that thought isn't a hundred percent true and guaranteed you can do it and we'll continue to push you until you get exactly what you need. And sometimes it takes that little cheerleader, you know, a little kick in the butt <laughs> to, uh, to make sure that happens. And that's what I will make sure of at the retreat, that those unhelpful thoughts are not stopping our members and retreat people from really getting what they need for their content because they're scared. Right. Yeah. Jill, I, you know, I know I told you this last week on our episode, but I love it. And I actually love that you're creating a platform for fitness professionals to learn how to do this with their clients. Because mm -hmm. you're right, those are like those shower thoughts that nobody ever says, right? And to uncover that, especially in the context of your most vulnerable time in front of a camera, even though you do bring your best game, yeah. is totally intimidating. So I'm super excited for you guys. It's going to be epic, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Kristen has created a cult following around WellFit Social, right? This is a series of premier networking events designed around health, wellness, and fitness. Kristen, I know that you have a deep passion for, for connecting fitness professionals in a way that elevates their expertise through education, right? You say, and I quote, in a world where social media is king, face-to-face -face interaction is queen. And in order to connect and grow, we need to create networks and make the world of wellness more inclusive. Tell us about how you are bringing this perspective into your reframe retreats. You have to use better. Yes, queen. Like that is how we all need to feel right now. We need that empowerment. And um, so back before TV, I was a bartender and I was a bartender for almost 15 years and still my favorite job. And I love food and beverage. And, you know, that was a time and it was mainly because I got to network and interact with so many people that were not in my realm. So mm. my friends were anywhere from, you know, the mayor who's in his seventies to the police officer who's there on the corner every night to, you know, these, you know, city council members and doctors and attorneys and teachers and stay at home moms and all these people that I, I found as a bartender, we, we all have more in common than we think. Mm. So there is a commonality you can find with literally every other individual on the planet. I don't care if you live in a high rise in New York or you live down in, you know, Florida in some small town you do have something in common. So it's just finding that and, and really just kind of monopolizing that and saying, okay, we are all very similar. We can help each other with something if we open ourselves up to it. And I, I missed being a part of that, kind of the, the conductor of mm. you know the night of getting conversations started and finding ways for people to help each other. Um, and so really WellFit Social came out of the need for me to one, be, human with other people face to face and make connections and to have them get out of their comfort zone and and make another connection that could help their business i we had at the last event that jill spoke at in january you know there's one woman there who came up to me crying she had not left her house in six months because of the fear of what people were going to treat her like or say to her because she didn't you know she it was in a bad spot and she mm. said you know i just I heard your words. I felt I needed to be here. And she had the most amazing time. She was literally holding me crying at the end of it because she got out and she pushed herself over that little hump, which to us looks like a mountain, but it's really not that big of a deal. And she realized what she was missing. And that was the most beautiful part about it. Um, and I, I just think that when we share connections like that, again, you put me in a room with 
you know, some, anybody and I will find something in common that I've experienced that they have too. And the more we do that, that is where real business relationships come from because online we're so used to a very, I call it synthetic or, you know, uh, polished approach to things. When we're one-on-one, we really know who we, we are and it gives you a different level of trust to work with people. And, you know, I've always been a big proponent of having human touch, like actually having to be around other people. So that was the main reason behind it. And that's why the retreats came into that because there's no better support than a bunch of women behind you saying, girl, you look hot. Like you are, you're killing it. You're amazing. And we're not all the same. So we don't all have to look that way. Um, I struggled with that the same way, you know, I did not the fitness competitions, but more of the swimsuit stuff back 20 years ago. And I was the fat one. I mean, in essence, because I didn't have small legs, I grew up showing horses. Mm -hmm. So I could never have skinny legs, still don't to this day. And that made me actually consider like plastic surgery and all these things. Cause I was like, I need to look like them. And it took me a good decade to get out of that place, but I didn't have any support. I didn't have anybody doing it with me. It was all by myself. So, right. you know, if I would have had more people saying, you know, no, this is how you're meant to look and this is your healthiest you, um, you know, I wouldn't have been unhealthy in trying to achieve something that wasn't me. Um, so that's the biggest part is that, I'm, and I'm glad we're in that era now where we are celebrating differences more than, you know, having to look like a cookie cutter image of each other. I think that's a pretty beautiful thing too. Yeah, I completely agree. But you know, this is why I started this conversation with this podcast because these stories is what bridges the gap, I believe. Mm -hmm. Because this is a world of social media and we look at fitness competitors like Jill and like yourself with these striking images. And oftentimes it's intimidating and you think to yourself, I can't do that. I can't be there. But when you hear stories like Jill about overcoming cancer and dealing with MS or, you know, you yourself being so stunning, but also struggling with self-image, right? Mm -hmm. I think that gives people access to saying, oh my God, that's me right? Mm -hmm. And I think that those stories are so important. That's why I started this podcast, right? Because when you hear uh, the stories behind that face, that body, that image, right? The automatic Mm -hmm. perception we have of others, then you break down those barriers and you're like, oh my goodness, if they can do it, I can do it too, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that this retreat just (laughs) reframes the conversation, right? <laughs> Completely. <laughs> Fun, right? Good tie-in, good tie-in. Good tie-in. So perfect, the name, right? It, it, it is. I mean, it really does sum up what we're trying to do because, I mean, as women in general, I mean, I, again, I did everything alone for so long because I was really the only one who had my weird life background of, you know, experiences. And I didn't think anybody could relate. And it wasn't until I stepped into the fitness wellness realm that I found more of a home, I guess, because everybody struggled with something, but they were just more open about it. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the other businesses, people are just, you know, because there isn't that collection, physical collection, because we all share wanting to be very physical people. Mm -hmm. um, You know, there's just no place to talk about it. So it just wasn't a conversation at other jobs. Um, So this was, you know, uh, the first time in my life when I felt that I was was truly welcomed into a room of women because we all dealt with the same thing. Nobody who is a fitness model looks like that all the time. That's true. Nobody does. (laughs) So please don't think everybody walks around with their six pack 365 days a year because we don't. Nobody does. And I've been in that space for six months. I've just been happy and eating. So just leave me alone and I'm happy. (laughs) Like Jill knows this. I will eat (laughs) everything in sight. So, you know, but we, we have to do that for our mental health because Mm -hmm. to sit there and abuse your body over and over again is not healthy and you can still look good i mean jill just she follows such an amazing regimen for her health because she has to but most people you just have to have that mental strength to do it and it is hard it's not easy and i just don't you can't expect it to be perfect all the time exactly yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So as you guys know, I just got back from Costa Rica on my Woo! first ever Woo! retreat. 
right? And one of the things I often speak about to my clients and on this podcast <clears throat> is that living your best life is a moment to moment phenomenon. That it doesn't need to be just because you're turning 40 or 50 or had a baby or got a divorce, right? That I believe you can be the best version of yourself every single day, day in and day out, right? Mm -hmm. Like obviously a work in progress, but that it doesn't have to be because something is happening, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that if you have this fixated approach to your best version, that your belief systems become stuck, that your efforts become this big task because something is coming up, right? That revenge body, that special birthday. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, even though people are successful in the context of that, it's often just short lived, right? Because you get your best body for 40 and then you fall off the bandwagon, right? Mm -hmm. So I often yeah. speak, preach about consistency and that your best version exists in your habits of daily practice, right? Yeah. But I had an oh, yeah. epiphany on this retreat oh. because I've been in the fitness industry for 20 years. And even though that's the conversation, I've never done a fitness or yoga retreat, right? And for me, I'm turning 40 this year and it was my reason it's amazing but it was my reason to say okay now i can go on a fitness on a yoga retreat i will create the space for it i will save the money for it i will make the effort right my two kids having my husband to deal with it it was a big deal right <laughs> but I, then i realized this is the same thing right why does going on a retreat have to be because i'm turning 40 and I bring this up because you guys have create, created and curated this amazing retreat for people that can step outside of themselves to reframe the way that they live them, their lives and up level where they, all, where they are in a practice of self-love and personal advancement, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I wholeheartedly believe that in the statement that you guys posted, that investing in yourself is the, the one thing that will always pay off. So let's talk about that a little bit because I think people think, oh, a retreat, like it's a big deal, right? But let's talk about the elephant in the room and why taking on your next retreat in June is mm -hmm. a good idea because of this practice of personal advancement. And it's not because we are turning 40 or waiting until that one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, we have quite a few ladies already booked in and actually you'll it might shock a few people on here but they are my clients that i've worked with for a year and a few of them it wasn't for a photo shoot retreat it was just bettering themselves bettering their bodies and their happiness and one of them is 63 years old and she's doing her yeah. first photo shoot amazing and she is coming and it's not that i have to look lean i have to look great and in my head as a trainer, I think, oh, maybe she wants to dial in for this shoot, you know, and especially at that age, you know, is she going to feel ready? And she just said, I deserve to go away, put myself a priority mm -hmm. and be with like-minded women and capture some beautiful memories that I have for a lifetime and can show my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that is something so special. And regardless of what you look like, what, you know, you think this picturesque, perfect look should be, what we are right now is the most powerful thing. And when we can just pick up and go and say, yep, I'm going to shoot, those pictures are the most beautiful because they're authentic and real. And you can see it in people's eyes. And when somebody's depleted, tired, and they're trying to look their best, it shows a really dull look. Mm -hmm. And then when somebody's vibrant and happy, oh, those pictures are worth a million words. And honestly, publishers, magazines, they will pick those ones up. Yeah. I love, I love that. that story. Mm -hmm. I think that's super special, but it is. It's, it's the profound truth, right? Mm -hmm. um, that you don't have to wait till that one day, someday, that it really is an active practice of like, you deserve it now. Yeah. 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 So let's talk about those two upcoming retreats. I know that you have, I guess the next one is in June. So what can people expect of that experience with the two of you ladies? All right. So we, you know, in these retreats in general, we are going to obviously have the girl time and the fun. I mean, that's the biggest part of it, but you get to do the photo shoots, which again, we are picking photographers that are top level people who have been published. They've been in the game. They know what they're doing. They're there to make you look and feel your best because there's nothing worse than having a photographer who you're not comfortable with and you know again those images don't come out you're often yeah, those self. creepy photographers we're not having no no creep <laughs> no creeps i will i will punch a fool 
people in the face real quick. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's just one of the, I, this is how I, she knows how, this is how I am about everything. Um, so she's I my security guard hard. guys. I, I love it. I, it's also a side hustle. I need to make money somewhere. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it's all right. But it's, you know, it's one of those things like we want to work with the best people because again, we've been blessed enough or privileged enough to be able to work with those and make those connections. And we want to share them with other people because again, it's selfish if you're not sharing the things that can help other people succeed. Um, so we have the best photographers, so we're going to have the day-long photo shoot, you get to change out, you get the hair, you get the makeup, you get the, you know, the whole experience of us helping style your clothes and just mm. feeling, I mean, just like a queen, like you should be. And then we're going to have amazing food and, you know, healthy breakfast, lunch, dinner, some fun dinners, you know, things that we'll do in the evening with women, special guests who may stop into our retreats and speak on those subjects. Um, you know, obviously with my connections in media, we have people who can talk on that. You know, Jill with fitness connections. We'll just have some really fun surprises through the year for people um, that I don't think they'll see coming. Um, and then, mm -hmm. you know, they get some fun goodies. They get to, you know, try new products. Um, you know, it's really just when you want to invest in yourself, you should feel spoiled and you should feel empowered and that's exactly what's going to happen for the days you're there and we take care of everything so you just literally show up and have a great time and we plan you know help you plan your outfit so you're comfortable you're confident and then you get the bonus of really the media and pr and cbt specialty that really we're the only people that can offer that which is why we came together because i know one side i know tv i know media and, you know, Jill knows magazines and I'm, you know, in the magazine world in that sense of a newbie this year with, with the publications of being published at a higher level. But, you know, together we can combine those talents and actually give people this entire well-rounded few days where you get everything you need to really honestly push yourself forward. And whether that's just, you know, I mean, mentally or, or through getting published, we're giving you all the options. So we're giving you all the tools you need. <laughs> and Kristen's got some magic because I'll say within 24 hours of going to Virginia, she put me on live TV, live radio, and then made me speak in front of a whole bunch of people. So <laughs> legit, she'll get you where you want to be. <laughs> I love it all. So in my upcoming series, I talk about how photo shoots can change your perception on yourself. I interviewed this girl by the name of Danae Pierce. She actually won a transformation challenge with Strong Fitness a year ago, yeah. as well as a photo shoot with Paul Bacetta. Mm -hmm. And I interviewed her. I know her, her, and she's amazing, by the way. Yeah, so I interviewed her. We had to do, did a two-part series. Yay. Um, but she speaks specifically to the photo shoot, how, so I'm saying this because for all of you listening, I believe these ladies only have two spots in their June retreat, right? Mm -hmm. But it is, if you guys are intimidated by photo shoots, Danae speaks specifically about how it completely shifted the way she saw herself. Because yes, it's intimidating to get in front of a camera, but once she flipped and saw what the lens saw, she couldn't believe it, right? It is life altering. So those of you listening, if this is something that kind of gave you a little twinkle in your eye that you're like, wow, maybe that can be me, sign up. There's only two spots left, right? So get in while it's hot, right? Um, no, yep. for sure, because I think it is a beautiful opportunity, right? Yeah, I think anyone can look, you know, I mean, everybody, like I said, everybody has something special about themselves. And I think the camera reveals that in a way that you weren't expecting um you know because sometimes you just you don't see it yourself you actually be shown on an outside thing and I told Joe before I hated my voice like I didn't like my own voice and then once I started doing television I was like oh it's not that bad like I actually sound you know I sound okay and I my mom did that to me put me in the modeling classes when I was younger because I was a, a nerd and very very dorky and she was like no you take great pictures and I was like no I don't I'm not pretty enough and I literally remember thinking that way and she put me in a modeling class and when I saw the photos you know I was I was surprised I was honestly surprised I was like wow I can actually take a picture and it looks it looks pretty good mm -hmm. and that was my first first time ever being in front of a camera and I think I was probably like 15 and that was, that was a, like, you just said it perfectly. It was a life-changing moment for me because I 
realized I actually had those pictures fall out of my folder in high school on accident. Did not, you know, they were in my folder and a guy picked him up off the floor who was a, a senior. I was a sophomore and he picked him up and he was like, who is this? And I was like, that's me. And he's like, no way, this is you. I was like, yeah, that's me. He's like, wow, you look, you look, you actually look hot in this photo. I was like, <laughs> okay. I mean, Thanks. sideways compliment, but in that sense, I was like, wow, you don't realize yeah, it is, it's such a great perspective on yourself because you really like I, we, we are harder on ourselves. So it's just kind of taking that away, I think is amazing. So I love that point. So, and you know what, doing professional photos is vastly different than taking a photo at Walmart that, you know, yeah. we've all done that. You've got some experts here to help you and position you. If you're like, I don't even know how to pose in front of a camera. It doesn't matter. Nope. I had no idea what I was doing when I started, but I just had the right teachers to help. And that's where we're yep. here to guide you. Yeah. So exciting for all your participants. Jill and Kristen will be hosting their first ever retreat for fitness pros that builds their brand this July in Houston and November in Arizona. So mm -hmm. I strongly believe that fitness and wellness professionals have a huge responsibility to be beacons of knowledge and guidance to their clients and have a clear message and voice about what they're up to, right? Oftentimes, fitness professionals don't know how to communicate their brand or their messaging, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited that you guys are doing this for fitness pros so that they can get clarity. So mm -hmm. share with us a little bit about that special fitness retreat for pros. Yeah. Uh, when we decided to do this, Krista and I felt one of the biggest struggles was the amount of things that are non-existent or people under deliver that you're going to things and you're just disappointed at the end of it. And mm -hmm. that's the last <laughs> thing that we wanted was to feel, Oh, I didn't get what I needed. Or you go to a photo shoot, and you have no idea what you're doing there. You just take a crap load of photos and then think, I'll figure it out when I get home. And then you look at a storyboard and you're like, okay, this doesn't work. And until you start working with story content creators that you know, I've leveled up my brand and worked with them specifically, they have a storyboard, they have a mood board, they understand exactly what photos need to be done, exactly the words, mm -hmm. typography, colors, everything matters. And when you're a you know, single business owner and you're starting out, you don't realize that is so important and your time is important. So what we've decided to do with these retreats is a have a discovery call before you even go to the retreat so that we know the game plan, exactly what you need. And you're not trying to just fluff some stuff up and, you know, throw some crap together, to be honest. It's the colors are needed. We know exactly what, it, what we want so we can execute with precision. And when they leave, there's a ton of content and they know exactly how to launch, you know, their first time product or service or another one come January. It's November. You got three months. You have everything you need to do, hmm. including email sequences. We have people that can talk about copywriting, that can talk about brand awareness online, podcasts such as yourself. So we have the experts already that are willing to help hmm. the people that come, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's incredible. I will post all the details in the show notes so that people can get access to that and book themselves up. And I know that it's going to be a smaller retreat, right? You're only taking a max of what, 25 people? 15 to 20. 15 to 20. But right. the house is <laughs> is a jaw dropper. Like it's legit, insane. I just... Yeah. Amazing. Insane. So like... not only will you be building your brand, but you will be enjoying your time oh, there yeah. for sure. It's Every like, single inch of that house is picturesque quality, which, wow. like I said, well, what well, Kristen says, she doesn't do anything small, that's for sure. <laughs> I love it, Kristen. So exciting. Yep. Well, before I, we end, I would love to hear a little bit about the book that you guys are creating together. Yes, let's talk about that. This is exciting. This was another one of the um, part of our three hour business planning <laughs> that we just crunched down everything um, because Jill said, well, I have an idea about this. Okay, well, I have an idea about this. Well, what could we do to actually help people more? What about a book? Okay, a book sounds great. What can we do in the book? Let's talk about fitness. Let's talk about business. Let's say all the things you need to not do. All of that came out like literally word vomit again. Like we just kind of everything came out at once. May have been over so some drinks as well. It, well, I mean, yeah. that happens. I yeah, mean, it, yeah. It's essential. But, <laughs> you know, so we decided in the story, and the story is actually in the preface of the book, um, is the power of five. So it's the power of the people surrounding you to lift you up. And mm. we both realized in our conversations that we had these integral players in our 
life that were helping us either build a business or supporting us, but we were missing the fifth person, which was each other. So we were in, you know, when we were in that together, we realized that we were each other's motivator and kind of that final connection to bring all of that together. So the book, you know, essentially moves through building and reframing your life and your business using the five, five steps to get through it and finding those five people. Um, so it really, you know, we talk about a lot of things in there that we've experienced, like mm -hmm. pay to play when it comes to getting media and publications versus what you should expect for free, the quality you're going to get, you know, a lot of those topics. So, you know, we're really going to share pretty much everything that we have been through again. So people don't waste their money and make mistakes like we did <laughs> in all these years. <laughs> that is so amazing and exciting. And when do you plan to publish that? September, October of 2020. That's right. Sure. That's this year. Ladies, this year. you are powerhouses. I absolutely <laughs> love it. We'll have to get you back on the show to talk about that when, when it's ready to launch. Amazing. Um, I think that's incredible. Uh, I would love to know, I guess, before we wrap up, what you are most excited about running these retreats for women and for your fitness pros. I know for me, it's just connecting one-to-one -one and mm -hmm. having a fun time. When you're with a group of women and you get to talk, you're away from home, you're away from your kids, my dog, my husband, all the to-dos <laughs> that we have, and we can just shut off and just enjoy three days together. That is incredible and big things happen. Yeah, I feel the same way. It's a, the connection part of it because mm -hmm when you're around a bunch of strong ass women that are capable of so much. And then we all come to this, like, ah, we're like, <laughs> you, you realize we can all do it. And then everybody just gets stronger and everybody just like opens up. And it's, again, it's the most freeing feeling to be able to be in a space and, you know, feel your best, look your best and not have to ask for permission or feel guilty about anything you say or do that weekend. Because again, Jenna, I love a party. So it will definitely mm -hmm. be a party. There will be a lot of music. There will be a lot of fun every evening regardless. So I, you know, it's, it's an experience. Like we need to invest in experiences and mm -hmm. I cannot wait to see the love and the connections that are created out of it and how long those last. Like mm -hmm. that's the best part. Yes. Well, I thank you both so much for sitting down with me today. And I'm so excited for what you guys are creating and continue to create with the book and the retreats. Um, and I will post everything so all of you listening can make sure you get in on this, uh, follow along, make sure you grab uh, the, the freebie that you guys have on your reframe site. Uh, everything about this is cult worthy. Uh, I appreciate your time. No, thank you for having us. You're super fun. I look forward to you coming to the retreats, I girl. <laughs> I know. We're going to have a party. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Thank awesome. You.